I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. For I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every dark addiction starts to break, declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like the fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is love, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like the fire. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, your name is power. Your name is a healing. Your name is love. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like the fire. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is love. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like the fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is light, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise God. God bless you, brother. You sing better in English. More than so. Amen. Amen. Oh, I think so. <laughs> Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to I thank you all uh, for coming and uh, being a part of what God uh, is doing. Um, I just came back from Houston, Texas. Uh, I was just visiting, uh, in addition to that, to be able to look at the uh, the meeting that's coming up uh, June 4th. If you have anyone in Houston, please, family member, acquaintances, in-law, outlaws, let them know June 4th, 6 p.m. at Victory Assembly of God, 6 p.m. I'll be there for a miracle healing, healing, healing meeting, revival service. 
And as God would have it, though, I wasn't supposed to minister in that church this Sunday because they already <laughs> planned their schedule months in ahead. They told me, I said, I said, that's fine. I'm, I'm content to just come worship with my my friends and brothers and siblings. I have seven siblings there. But on, but on I think on Friday or Wednesday or so, the speaker canceled. He had an emergency. And then the Lord fell on me. I had to bring the message in that church yesterday. I mean on Sunday. And brethren, I um, submit to you. I have witnesses on this line. God did amazing miracles. God. Yeah, Praise there God. were spectacular healings. And God Praise will take God. the gl glory. God healed a lot of people there. And then I stayed after the service to pray for some more in the prayer room. So I want to so thank wanna... you. Please, I'm getting a feedback. Somebody mute. Somebody mute. I also want you to know that the project for the widows is coming strong. I want to thank you for participating. But I also want to ask you to help us get to the, the first threshold is the 100 goats. The first threshold is 100 goats. And we are now, I believe, uh, 70, to be sure. We've gotten 70 goats. We have 30 more to go. Help us get to the finishing line for the first threshold for that particular locality for the widows. And uh, the brethren who are buying the goats, God gave them wisdom. They were able to buy 15 of them that were pregnant, expecting. So <laughs> our, our objectives coming true. At least maybe before we get there in August, those would have had babies. I don't know who goats. I don't think they, they multiply like puppies. But I pray that these ones that are expecting, I pray for twins and triplets. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> shout hallelujah. So, hallelujah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I need I need you to, to join me. He's a God of miracles. Yes, After yes. all, he gave us uh, pregnant goats, and uh, we need to <laughs> take care of them and make sure. Yes. So please, please help us. In case you're new, it's one hundred dollars per goat. One hundred dollars per goat. One hundred dollars. Get up and help us get to the first threshold of 100. The second thing too is I'm planning a trip to Israel for March. I know when you see people advertise, I can't condemn anybody. I don't know all the what's involved, but I know because this we've been there before. The, the trip will not be 5,000 or 7,000 something that you see on TV. It's gonna be 1,500 only. 1,000 for everything in Israel, except you're gonna buy your flight ticket. We're gonna coordinate that. That's the flight tickets now are going between for between 800 and 1200, which is not bad. From Orlando, maybe everybody will gather in Orlando, or we're flying it from Houston. Everybody will get a local flight to that, and we fly. It's uh, it's something I would encourage you to go. 1500 includes all the hotels, all the food, all the sites. Everything in Israel, everything online in Israel. The tours, the tour guide, everything, 1,500. And flight probably 800, to no more than 1,200. You know, the earlier you buy the ticket, the better. So if you want to go, let me know. We want to at least have 20 people to be able to get a discounted rate. We were in Israel just a few years ago, just before the pandemic, and this group is... Sometimes you don't know the group you're joining, what you're going to see. This group is a good group. You're going to see everything that is in the scriptures. In fact, when I went, I, I had a personal revival. I had a personal revival. I took out my Bible as we were coming. I started reading the Bible from Genesis almost. Almost. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't read the entire Bible. I wish I could have. But that was my goal. But I, I, I went half through. I was half through. I, I couldn't I couldn't eat the food in the airplane. I, I couldn't sleep. I just kept reading the Bible. It was such uh, incredible revival, personal revival in me. Um, it will bless your heart and your soul. Tell friends, tell people, tell acquaintances. Come along with us to Israel, March 9 through March 18. It's going to be a fantastic journey. All right. Um, also, 
I can overemphasize the importance of telling your friends to come to the meeting in Houston, especially if they have sickness and maybe doctors have told them there was no cure and uh, tell them to come and try Jesus, the one who has never lost a patient. And uh, he's going to do miracles for them because we have seen him do it over and over. All right. Tonight, though, I was just uh, reflecting on something and the Spirit of God is just leading me into this. I want to just go through some issues with disobedience. What is disobedience? There could be so many definitions of disobedience, but any time we go against what God has called us to do is disobedience. Anytime we go contrary to the will of God is disobedience. And disobedience has many, many consequences. Many, many consequences. Sister, I tell you, I want you to read Genesis chapter 3. Start from verse 1 until I tell you to stop. Sister, tell you. Chapter 3? Yes, start from verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God do know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Okay, okay, okay. You see, you see the you see part of the trick of the enemy is still using that trick today. He didn't say God had commanded you. Had God said, had God said, that's what the Bible said. Had God said, put in the doubt of what God had told them to do. And the mistake the woman made was to get into a conversation with the devil. You don't get into a conversation with the devil. You're going to get into, listen, he knows the Bible back and forth, upside down. But he can twist it. That is the difference. He can twist the Bible. The Bible said it was more subtle. And then he said to them, had God said, had God said, that's verse one. Had God said, you shall eat, you shall not eat of the fruit of the garden. Put in doubt. That is one of the ways the enemy attacks us to be able to walk in disobedience with God. When Jesus Christ was baptized by John the Baptist, and the Bible said, as Jesus was coming and he prayed, then the dove, the Spirit of the Lord, descended upon him like a dove. And there was a voice saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Everybody had that declaration. Some people thought it thundered, but everybody had that. And then when the devil went to Jesus to tempt him, what did the devil say? If you are the son of God. You see that? The seed of doubt. Had God said? He didn't say, well, since you're the son of God. No, he said, if you, if you are the son of God. Jesus could have gotten into a conversation with him and could have said, didn't you hear when the voice of the Lord said, I am his beloved son? Why are you asking me? No, Jesus had nothing to do with that. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. We don't need to get into conversation with the devil. We don't need to try to, you know what God has told you. You know what the word of God says. If you don't know, then read the word. For goodness sake, read the word of God. You know what the word of God says. And when something that is contrary comes to the word, don't entertain it. The reason why I'm saying this is because I've lived a long, a long, a long life, really. 
but I know I have more to live by the grace of God. I have seen people, including me, in disobedience suffer and reap terrible consequences of disobedience. Disobedience has terrible consequences in our lives. The Israelites, God told them, was going to take them to the promised land 40 days, 40 good days. Because of disobedience, they wandered for 40 good years. A lot of them died. Some of them were beaten by serpents. Disobedience has terrible consequences. And the way is very subtle, the way it comes. And sometimes it can come through relationships, family relationships, even Christians, even spouse, especially if you're married, listen to me, it's very important. Husband or wife, if your husband comes to you and says, the Lord is leading me into doing this thing, and God can never lead you to do something that is bad or something that is contrary to the will of God. And you as a spouse did not get that revelation. Do not discourage your husband. Just pray for him. The same thing to the husband. If the wife were to come and say, the Lord is laying this on my heart, do not discourage your wife, please. please. <clears throat> Especially if it's not something that is destructive, because God will not ask you to do that. Something that is in the will of God, but you just, you haven't gotten the revelation, but your wife has. Do not discourage her. Pray for her and tell her to, you will join her to pray more if, if he's still not sure that God will make it clear. That's the way to handle <coughs> it. Don't go ahead and just say, oh, honey, you know, you cannot do it. I was just going back to Ananias and Sapphira. Remember that? I just don't believe that Ananias and Sapphira woke up together and said, we're going to connive and cheat the Holy Spirit. I don't think so. It must have started with one of them. One of them must have said, hey, honey, I don't think this thing we are going to do is, you know, is right. Let's just try to deceive or do that. And the other one says, sounds good. It cannot, two of them cannot just come up with the idea at the same time. It never happens. But if one of them had said, you know what? Um, I'm not sure what we are saying is right. Let's pray about it because there's something in my spirit that doesn't agree with what you're saying. It's okay to tell that to your spouse. If you don't, who else? That's why God brought you together. You all need to pray. Because when we got married, my wife was highly developed in the area of, uh, of uh, the Holy Spirit in terms of speaking in tongues and all that than me. Though God was doing the more miracles with me, but I hadn't been baptized with the Holy Ghost. I didn't have I didn't have the I, I didn't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost because I would pray and lay hands on the people they get baptized. And they thought I was already baptized. I just kept it to myself. When everybody gave testimony, I praised God with them, but they didn't know I wasn't baptized in the Holy Ghost. But I was seeing miracles. People were getting healed. My wife was already highly developed in that area with her spiritual language, and she could pray and sing. Some of you know her uniquely. I mean, uniquely in the spirit. She could sing uniquely in the spirit. It's amazing. I wasn't highly developed at that time, that way. But we kept together, we kept working. And the day I got baptized in the Holy Spirit was, I said, God, I have had enough. I prayed for people to get baptized, but I have not I've been baptized. I refused to eat or sleep that night, August 1973, in case you're wondering, wanted to know. I refused to sleep or eat in our house. I would pray. Then I would sit down. Midnight, I was having my own all-night meeting, revival, by myself. When I got tired, I stood up. When I felt sleepy, I sat. When I got tired, I stood up. I was sitting, standing, sitting, until 3 a.m. in the morning. The Holy Ghost hit me like a hammer. My body was hot. I began to speak in tongues, and the rest was history. So what am I telling you? It's very important. Because if Adam had really paused a little bit and said, honey, you know what? God already spoke to us. God spoke to us. I, I don't know. I can just speculate that he was trying to please the wife more than please God. And some of us do that. We want to please the wife or please the husband more than we are pleasing God. We can't do that. It's not even a choice. It's not even a competition. He didn't. No hesitation. See, there are consequences. So what are some of the consequences for Adam? Sin. He brought sin to all of us. 
and God caused the ground. I was doing research. I realized that before the fall of man, everything that God had was, the Bible said everything he did was good. He planted was good. There were no tongues. There were no tistos. There were no tongues. There were no, 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 no bad grass. There, there are nothing that would bite you or something. Or not, nothing like that before the curse. I mean, everything we had could have been eaten from that plant. No tons, no testos. No bad grass, nothing that you have to. But after the ground was caused, all those things came. Now there are tons, there are testos, there are all kinds of bad things. There are something, poison ivy and all that. We can go and they, all of that came as a result of sin. Pregnancy. I don't think it was supposed to be that painful before the curse, the fall of man. It wasn't supposed to be that painful, but now women, you know how painful it is now because of the fall. Hard labor came in, into existence. God told man to till the ground, but it wasn't to be hard labor. It was paradise. And that has been handed over to us. And then we had the first eviction without going to a lawyer or anybody. They were evicted. The Garden of Eden was closed for good, especially uh, when um, that was seen in times of Noah's time. So there were so many things. And now the sickness came and all that. All the sin brought in sickness. And all those things that came about because of disobedience. So disobedience does not just affect you or me. It affects our relationships. It affects our families. It affects others. Um, I want you to read the statutory. Read First Kings chapter 13. Now, I'm just giving you something just to, today is just a food for thought. Read First uh, Kings chapter 13. Statutory. I want everybody to listen to this story. It's a very important story. Some of you may have read it. Some of you may not have. Just listen. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, the child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day saying, this is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jer Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, if thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged me by the word of God, the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. And he went another way, and he returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. 
the words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also unto their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. He cried unto the man of God that came from Judah saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but came back and has eaten bread and drunk water in this place, of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thou can, I'm sorry, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy father's. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass and okay. behold. Met okay. okay, that's it. Do you, do you, did you guys see this story? This story is emphasizing something very, very important. God gave this prophet, gave him instructions to go do the work, but don't eat, don't do anything, don't go back the same way you came, go another way. And he did exactly what God had told him to do. When the king wanted to give him food, he said, no, even if you give me half of your kingdom, I will not because I will obey the voice of the Lord. And while he was going, he the children, some kids, saw him going. They spoke to their dad. Their dad was an old prophet, according to this scripture. I don't know why. I don't know what, why he did what he did. I don't know. He went on a horse and went to him where he was resting. And said, "Are you? were you the prophet? He said, yeah, I am. He said, oh, come on and eat with me. And so the man said, no. God said I shouldn't eat anything or touch anything. He said, no, I'm also a prophet. And an angel of the Lord spoke to me and said, I should tell you to eat. You see, the Bible said he lied to him. And he ate, he disobeyed God. What happened? The lion ate, his, ate him. And the lion stood guard to watch his carcass. You see, what I'm saying this is that these things are happening today. God had already spoken to you and somebody else came around and gave you a word contrary to what God has already spoken to you. You disobeyed what God has spoken to you and took the second word from somebody else. I don't know why he went that. I don't know why he listened to a former prophet who had a lying spirit. But he did that. He lost his life. You see, it's important. I, we see, I see it in churches. I see it on television. Thus says the Lord. But you know you know exactly that God had not spoken. Why would God change his opinion after he's already spoken to you? If he wants to change it, the same way he talked to you, the same way he's going to correct you or tell you, yeah, it's now time to eat. You left the sure word of God and listened to another prophet who gave you a bad advice or bad word. Not only did the lion him the lion stood there guard 
watching his carcass. It's very important. I had been to a meeting one time, and I don't mean this to brag, but just, just as an example. I had just left, went to a Christian retreat center. I was just tired of everything. I just wanted to stay in the presence of God. I would say that I just stayed in the presence of God for many, many hours. Because it was a Christian retreat center. You rent, rent a place, not fancy, away from the city. Stayed there for almost seven days. Came back to a revival service. The evangelist came and called me out and said to me, you know, um, you are, you are, you are not, I mean, you are not praying as you should. You are not praying as you should. You're disappointed because you're not praying as you should. You need to spend more hours in prayer. You need to spend more. Well, I said to myself, I had just come where I'd been spending almost almost 15 hours because I wasn't doing any other thing. I said to myself, how many more hours can I spend and still exist in this society? I had been to a place where I turned out my phone for almost seven days, stayed in the presence of God, crying and weeping. And now you're telling me that I need to pray more, more hours daily when I had given almost 15 hours a day for that. So it just didn't ring, even though it was a good word. But thank God he didn't tell me to do anything stupid. I would have challenged him publicly in that, in that meeting. I would have just spoken back to him. So it's very important. when you have the, That's why you need to have the word of God. You need to put it in your spirit. Even if I, I come, I'm your pastor or bishop or anything, I tell you something you know that is contrary to what God has already planted in your spirit. Don't, don't accept it. You don't have to be ugly. You can just thank me and then don't accept it. Go back to God if you're not sure. The same way he spoke to you. Why can't he come and speak to you the same way? Why would somebody else come and give you something contrary to what God had already given you? Part of these things you see, the spirit of pride leads almost to destruction and disobedience. When the reason why if said that they will eat that because the serpents told them they will be wiser and the tree would make, make them wiser, they would know more and her heart was lifted up and she wanted to be wiser and know more to the greater consternation of the world today. We may be wiser, but wisely foolish because of what we are going through right now. You see, God told the prophet, gave him instructions but he went and did something different. He, re he resisted the first one. The second one said, oh, I'm equally a prophet. And an angel spoke to me. With somebody who is listening to the voice of God, he will say, well, did that angel should have spoken to me too. But he didn't. I'm going to stick to the first one that I know for sure that was from God. If God wanted me to eat, an angel or whoever he uses would come and tell me directly, not from you. That would have been his. That would have been his position. And it was see, his, his disaster comes when we walk in disobedience. And you can always link disobedience. For most of the time, you can because you can link it to what? To pride. Because that of Eve, that's what happened. They wanted to be as God. You can link it. The Bible says of Jesus Christ, he did not count it robbery. He did not count it robbery to be what? Equal with God. Notice what he says again. He humbled himself and became obedient unto God. No way you could have been obedient unto God without humbling himself. Because pride comes before the fall. Pride leads to disobedience. Pride is to say, who who do you think you are? I can also do what what you know what you're doing. The Bible says Jesus humbled himself and became a He thought it not robbery. He didn't want to exploit Trinity. He humbled himself. So pride leads to disobedience. And you're on this line listening to me. I want to encourage you 
When you get in the presence of God, don't ask him to humble you because you won't like it if he does. Just tell him. The Bible says, humble yourself, therefore, in the mighty hand of God, he shall exalt thee in due time. <clears throat> humble yourself before him. Tell him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I just want this to be a kind of like a, a learning session. Let me show you another, another story in the Bible. Sister Terry, I want you to read 2 Chronicles 26, 14 through 21. 2 Chronicles 26, 14 through 21. I want everybody to listen to that. 14 through 21. Yeah. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and heavy. Is that Hebrigians? Yeah, yeah, go on. And bows and slings to cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name, Spear, far abroad. For he was marvelously helped till he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, but he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And as a, Azariah the priest went in after him and with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men and they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, it appertaineth not unto thee Uzziah to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was wrought and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wrought with the priests, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him. And behold, he was leprous. Okay. In his heart. Okay, that's it. You see, you see this? You see how most disobedience is connected to pride? Uzziah, if you read, I will just encourage you to read the whole thing. In Second Chronicles, or even it's also in Kings. This man was gifted. The Bible said he made all despair and all that. He built all of those things. And the Bible said he was famous. When you're famous in Egypt in those days, that was civilization. You were famous worldwide. Mm. He was famous. He could build. He was gifted. He could, I mean, it was like Apple before Apple was <laughs> developed in the Old Testament. He was gifted. Technologically, he could build things. A gifted king. But that was in his place. The Bible said, and his heart was lifted up as he became strong. He said, who do you think? Let me just... He began to despise his ministry, his uh, calling and tried to be a priest and wanted to offer sacrifice. The priest, they said the priest withheld him. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to go in disobedience. You, it's not your office. You're a king. You're not a priest. Please don't do it. They, he pushed them aside. And mm -hmm. he was going to do it. He disobeyed and became a leper. Became an outcast in the society. Became entirely an outcast and died a leper. Can you imagine that? In those days, lep lepers wore a bell around their waist, unclean, unclean. This was a king gifted by God. His heart was lifted up. And he became disobedient. That's why the Bible says, and Jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto them. It's very important. He was destroyed. He died a leper because of disobedience. The next one I'm going to talk to you about, you know, it was Saul. You can read it in 1 Kings chapter mm. 5, so chapter 15. You can read the entire thing. God anointed him king. When God anointed him king, Samuel was anointing him. What did Saul say to Samuel? Saul, Saul said to Samuel, I am from Kish, the humblest and the smallest city in Israel. We are not even known. We are not noble. Mm -hmm. But you anointed me. He said, yeah, the Lord wants to anoint you. 
Lord lifted him up. He became king. And God said, I want you to go destroy the Amalekites, leaving nothing. He went and destroyed the baseless things and spared the best of the oxen, the best of the sheep, and even the king, Agag alive. And when Samuel came, he said, oh, bless the Lord, just like we do, right? God says, I want you to give this offering. I want you to give $20. You give, you give $3. And everybody raising their hands, oh, praise the Lord, man, I gave to the kingdom. Listen, you're not going to go to hell when you don't obey God in giving or tithing. The Bible doesn't say that. But it says you're going to struggle financially. Read Haggai. It's in Haggai. He said, holes will be in your pocket. In fact, in Haggai, you know what the Bible says? He said, you've taken care of your own building. You've taken care of your own house. You've taken care of your own cars and everything, but you've left mine. You've left mine unattended. Because of that, there will be holes in your pocket. You won't go to hell, but you're going to struggle going to heaven here. That's the word of God. I don't believe with preachers who try to threaten people and say, okay, if you don't touch, you're going to go to hell. It's not in the Bible. But the Bible says there will be holes in your pocket. You're going to struggle. That's why so many are struggling. For The two problems we have in the church, number one is sickness. Number two is financial breakthrough. Because less than less than, less than than 1% of the people are tired. They are robbing God. That's disobedience. You raise your hand and, and uh, God is telling you, do this. You start, instead of obeying God, you went to discuss it. I, I, somebody, um, a relative of mine one time, called me and was crying on the phone. I said, why? He said, God had been telling him to send money to this guy. To this guy, this poor guy. He kept delaying it. He kept delaying it. Finally, he obeyed and sent the money. He sent the money like today, and the money got there like today. The guy died the day before. Mm. The guy died of hunger. A mm. man A day. You obeyed God a day too late. When God was telling you to send that money, weeks, God knew what was going in that guy. Maybe that guy had been crying unto God. I knew all the answer to that prayer. You delayed. And after the guy died, you sent the money. The money now was used to bury the guy rather than help him live. Wow. It's, it's important. I don't know what is more important. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says in John chapter 14, Sister Terry, John chapter 14, verse 15. Read John 14, 15. <clears throat> John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay. If you love me, keep my commandments. Read Luke 6, 40. Luke 6, 40. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. Oh, I'm sorry. I was reading 740, 640. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Okay. All right. Is that Luke, Luke 640? Luke, Luke 640, yes. Okay. All right. Good. I'm going to get what I'm getting to next. Now, I want you to read Acts 26, 19. Acts 26, 19. <laughs> Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Okay. You see, the, the apostle, the apostle Paul knew uh, the rise of disobedience. He said, I, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. That should be our prayer tonight. Now, what happened to, to Saul? Saul, he lost. Saul lost his kingdom, right? Yeah. The, the anointing left him. And Samuel said to him, and Samuel said to Saul, remember how you were small in your own mm -hmm. eyes you were small in your own eyes you were humble and now what has happened you are lifted up oh god i've done everything you said no liar you are walking in disobedience you are actually walking in disobedience 
and the cost of disobedience, look at in the, in the life of Saul, it will leave us to suffer consequences of our actions. And sometimes those consequences would affect people around us. Because in 1 Samuel 31, Saul lost his three children the same day. He died. Disobedience. His three children died. Many other soldiers were killed in that battle mm -hmm. because of disobedience. And partial obedience is not obedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. He said to Samuel, oh, thank God the Lord. Samuel said, what is that bleating of the sheep that I'm hearing? What is it? What is that bleating of the sheep that I'm hearing? God is asking you tonight, what is that bleating of the sheep that I'm hearing? Is there something God is telling you to do? You're walking in circles. You don't know why you come close to victory and the victory snatches away. Check and see whether you're walking in obedience or disobedience. Because the word of God cannot be like, listen, Sister Terry, read it. The one I asked you to read before was Luke. You should have been Luke 46. Luke 6, 46 through 49. I'm going to close in a minute. Luke 46. Luke 6, 46 through 49. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He's like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the floods arose and the, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that hear it and do it not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Mm. Disobedience is bad. You see that? You remember the song? The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. As the rain came tumbling down, the rain came down, and the floods went up. The rain came down, and the floods went up. The rain came down, and the floods went up. And the house that awesome. was still. You see that? Where the foolish man, we sing the foolish man. And the, when the foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sun, and the house came tumbling down. That is what happens. A man or a woman who does not walk in obedience with God is like a foolish person. He says, yeah, why call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do even one thing I tell you to do. Mm -hmm. Disobedience is deadly. It affects your life. It affects the children. It affects your marriage. It affects the, it affects the extended family. Saul lost it all in that battle. The favor of God left him. Just left him completely. The protection that God had over him was gone. The Bible said evil spirit troubled him. Mm -hmm. And he became deluded. It's not worth it, brethren. Walk in obedience. Because a man, a woman who walks in obedience, God will bless you. It doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. Look at David. Yeah. God called him after his heart. He killed somebody. Took somebody's wife. But he had the wonderful, the most wonderful repentance in Psalm 51. Samuel didn't, Saul didn't repent. If Saul did, it would have been a different story. But what Saul did, even this, this, this wasn't the first disobedience. The second one, was when Samuel told him to wait to offer sacrifice. Samuel was supposed to do the sacrifice. He waited. And then the people began to get, get uh, impatient and began to complain. He went and offered the sacrifice. While he was doing it, look at Sam. Samuel said, what have you done? What have you done? He said, I waited. You were coming not at appointed time. And then the, I looked at the people. I decided. So as Samuel was walking away, he pulled the Samuel's clothes. Pulled, 
He ripped it. Someone said the Lord has ripped the kingdom from you these days. It is it is just uh, it is just uh, incredible what happens. Just incredible what happens when we don't obey God. When we walk in disobedience. People made you do it. I did it because people. Adam, what happened? Well, the woman you gave me. The woman you gave me, what happened? Well, the serpent. Serpent, what happened? Then Satan. No. I pray that the Holy Spirit will search us. This is not to condemn anybody. This, this wasn't what I was going to share. It came just two hours before this meeting. Disobedience has been blocking so many on this line from getting to their destinies. And it's deadly. Just search. Why is it some of the promises of God who've been claiming for years? They haven't come to pass yet. You know you are in the center of the will you're doing. There may be an area of disobedience. There may be just an area. Search. Have the Holy Spirit search you. And see. Because the man or the woman who walks in obedience, you destiny, your, you don't have to chase your destiny. Your destiny comes to you. Because that is the will of God. When you walk in obedience, Jesus was an example of that. Disobedience is deadly. It affects the umbilical call of our family life. It affects our children. It allows the curse to come into our lives and our families. And the Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse. But then if we keep working in disobedience, the umbrella that God has over our lives, there's a crack in it. That's a big crack. And things are happening that are not supposed to be happening. I pray that tonight that God will touch each and every one of us and uh, minister to your necessities and lead you in any area of your life where you might be working in disobedience. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. It's not our intention to disobey you. Help us, whether we are doing it advantageously or inadvertently. Such a spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. I want everybody to pray silently. Talk to God. Talk to God. Let him search your spirit. Let him search your heart. If there are areas of disobedience, talk to him. Just let him search you. Tell him you don't want to live in this room. Beauty of Jesus be seen in me, all his wondrous compassion and purity. O thou spirit divine, all my nature refine till the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me all his passion oh thou spirit divine all my nature refined till the beauty of Jesus as we see oh father we thank you thank you tonight we want to walk in obedience we want to do the things that are pleasing in your sight. 
The psalmist said, take not your Holy Spirit from us. Cast not us away from your presence. Renew our spirit within us. Hallelujah.